Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca as well as Global Recruiters of Montreal. So our topic of discussion today is the Global Talent Stream Best Practices. So before we get started, we just want to touch on two things. There's been two express entry draws this month in May 2017. So on May 17th, the, oh, sorry, we'll start with the most recent, sorry. The, the May 4th May, one. May 4th one, right. sorry. So it was 423 for the CRS score. And then again on May 17th, there was another draw, and the CRS score was 415. So obviously continued healthy draws, uh, great numbers, about 3,700 applicants getting invitations on each draw. Interestingly, this year, uh, to date, uh, 43,000 476 invitations have been issued. Uh, probably expect another two, possibly three more draws uh, for this uh, particular six-month period. So this brings us to the temporary, for the temporary Foreign Worker Program. So this will be opening on June 12th. So what is the aim of the government? So the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, we're going to have a new stream that's being created called the Global Talent Stream. Uh, June 12th uh, is the uh, anticipated rollout time. Uh, we're still waiting for the fine details. As they say, uh, the details are, are everything and we just, the devil's in the details. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, but the aim, of course, uh, is to attract highly skilled workers. I mean, that's a very broad mandate. Uh, but the government is looking to uh, ring certain hallmark uh, objectives. Uh, attract highly skilled uh, workers. Um, facilitate the growth uh, of Canadian companies and uh, create jobs. And of course, uh, what will be a quite an interesting element that I think we'll see uh, when, the, when the regulations come out is, is transferring knowledge to Canadians. So there will be a process where employers have to prove that there is, in fact, a transferring of knowledge to Canadians. Uh, so, so who is the government, so you mentioned highly skilled workers, so who is the government targeting? So obviously it's the highly specialized, uh, in-demand uh, occupations. Um, we're probably looking at uh, high growth industries in Canada okay. and as well uh, international companies that are going to uh, want to make uh, st big investments in Canada. So we're looking at large corporate entities either in Canada, uh, those that are outside Canada seeking to uh, anchor and, and uh, establish and, and uh, obviously hire uh, Canadians. Um, so there's, there's these three main objectives, transferring knowledge, creating jobs, uh, and, and overall benefiting the economy. Okay, so what are some of these in-demand, these highly skilled occupations? So we're looking at STEM occupations. So we're looking at the sciences, the technology, uh, engineering, and maths. We, we call them STEM occupations. Uh, we're looking at software engineers. We're looking at NOC occupations, 2171, 2147. Uh, we're probably going to see manufacturing uh, and production occupations. Again, we're waiting for the regulations or ministerial order to come out, but this is the, the broad strokes that we're seeing uh, and that we uh, anticipate will, will take place. And so how is this program going to work? The key that I think employers are going to have to meet the, the, uh, the threshold is they're going to have to prepare a labor market benefits plan. The, the labor market benefits plan, very similar to a transition plan when you're dealing with a labor market impact assessment, the, the benefits plan is really going to have to, hopefully, first of all, I hope that there's proper criteria that's going to come out uh, either through regulations or ministerial order, uh, but this benefits plan is going to have to nail down certain criteria. Uh, so an employer, whether they're coming from abroad and establishing in Canada or an in-Canada employer, uh, in order to uh, benefit from a labor market impact exemption, which is really what's going to happen, it's moving lots of foreign workers into Canada uh, via an exemption. Normally you have to apply for an LMIA uh, and you're going to have to submit a benefits plan 
Uh, and if it succeeds, you'll be exempted from having to produce an LMIA. Uh, work permits will be issued fairly quickly. Uh, the benefits plan will be probably the service standards are, are in the area of 10 days to approve a benefits plan. Once it's approved and an employer can bring in foreign workers without an LMIA or an exemption, uh, work permit applications probably could be done in 14 days. Those are the service standards we're, we're seeing and, and, and hopefully uh, the government will be able to, to reach that. Uh, there will also be a little, uh, some, some uh, subcategories, uh, some small uh, nuances, for example, uh, employers who will be bringing in workers uh, frequently uh, for a cumulative duration of less than 30 days a year uh, won't need uh, to have a work permit. Uh, so these are, this is an interesting uh, stream uh, as part of the Temporary Foreign Worker Program. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's obviously a new concept, but bear in mind, um, there was a report that just came out last week from the Auditor General, and that report criticizes um, the uh, continuing uh, anomaly, or I'll call them abuse, uh, of the program where there's uh, Canadians available, yet the employers are still being able to bring in foreign workers. So the, the, the basis for bringing in foreign workers, of course, is that there are no Canadians available. Uh, the recent Auditor General's report that came out last week, we've written about it uh, on our website. Take a look at it. Um, and it basically shows that there are a number of, of foreigners that are coming into Canada that are taking jobs away from Canadians. So I think the government has to balance very carefully uh, the criteria to produce a benefits plan that an employer will have to uh, produce uh, in light of the continuing concerns that uh, foreigners are coming in and taking jobs away from Canadians. This uh, is, is certainly in some areas of the country and with some employers uh, this is still taking place. So hopefully the benefits plan that is going to be part of this uh, global talent stream process uh, will contain clear criteria and it will be um, uh, uh, assessed and uh, implemented in a, in a transparent way. Okay. So this brings us to recruitment and retention best practices. So Colin, how can employers benefit from the global talent stream? Well, you know, Andrea, what employers need to, to look at first is that uh, before you go out and recruit, you really need to know how are you going to retain. You're bringing in foreigners uh, who really want to anchor in Canada. And I think before you start the recruitment side, you have to uh, really have a good grasp of how you're going to retain uh, individuals. And that's with permanent residents. So retention and permanent residents go hand in hand. And an employer who's going to be involved in, in taking advantage of what seemingly could be a, a fantastic uh, element to the Canadian immigration landscape, the global talent stream, uh, need to be aware of the main tools in which an employer is going to be retaining a foreign worker permanently in the future. Uh, obviously, we have two main considerations. There's the federal program, which everyone refers to now uh, since January 2015. It's the express entry system. Uh, it's an efficient system. It's becoming uh, more efficient and more fine-tuned. Uh, applications are processed. If you're working in Canada, applications are processed uh, in generally six months or less. And that's the general service standards, eight uh, eighty percent uh, of the applications uh, where an applicant is working in Canada on a work permit or such uh, is going to be processed through express entry uh, in six months or less uh, and we're seeing that some of our clients are receiving uh, full uh, conclusions to their applications they've received ITAs so you've got your main program and you're looking case by case there's no robot system to to go through and evaluate which strategy you're going to be using. Every single case, unfortunately, needs to be looked at uh, without uh, a robotic approach. You have to be able to assess how is that particular candidate and why is this so? Because uh, if you're going to go through the fast express entry system, <clears throat> sorry, you really have to know generally the profiles 
of, of applicants that are going to succeed through that program. Uh, bearing in mind the changes that came in in November 2016, uh, individuals working in Canada received 50 points uh, for uh, their standing in Canada, having worked in Canada. Uh, and you've got other uh, elements. The express entry system is by invitation only, uh, and the profile of an individual is generally have uh, pretty strong English, uh, good education, a certain age profile. Uh, so this particular stream is very fine-tuned for a particular candidate. Uh, so that's the, the first program. The second program that they might be looking at for permanent residents are the provincial programs. Now, you know, the provincial programs, what I call the catch-all. It's the catch-all program because if you can't uh, meet the, the express entry system, if for any reason, uh, as we know, the, the latest, lowest scores for uh, the invitations uh, that have been issued are four, is 450. Uh, we've had that twice, once in March and once uh, the last one on May 17. So you have to understand, are your, is your candidate that you're going to retain uh, before you recruit, uh, is the candidate going to go through the federal express entry system, or are you, doing, uh, are you going to be relying on the catch-all provincial programs? All of the provinces and the territories have uh, robust immigration programs. Some of them are very active in the express entry system, and others uh, are not so active, but uh, they're, they're participating in their own individual programs offering permanent residence. Now, bear in mind, uh, the, the, the downfall of a, of a provincial program, there's no doubt about it, it's much longer. Uh, we're seeing programs open and close very quickly. It's quota based. Yes. The quotas are small, realistically speaking. They're, they're quite modest. Um, and of course, uh, for permanent residence, Quebec has its own particular set of rules. Yep. Uh, we'll see how Quebec fits into the new global challenge stream. But you're dealing with ideally uh, a federal express entry system for non-Quebec cases, for employers outside Quebec. Uh, and then you're dealing with provincial programs. So once you know uh, the main criteria, and language really is, language really is the stream, of the, the thread that, that blends all the streams. Canada is now looking for applicants who are fairly strong in English. Those that are, have you know, particular skill sets that are in demand in a province, you may not have to have uh, the highest levels of English, but unfortunately the main thread uh, for, recruit, for retention and, and retaining a candidate for permanent residence really is language. So now that you know uh, or you should be looking at how you're going to uh, retain, then you can go out and say, all right, as an employer, how are we going to recruit? Where? Okay. So this, yes, yeah, so that brings us to where should a company recruit from? So, you know, it's the, again for applicants. You know, today's today's presentation is is largely directed at hiring managers for for Canadian companies or foreign companies who are looking to establish an anchor in Canada. Uh, applicants who are watching today's stream or or following us later. Uh, you know, uh, this is a very narrow stream. It's not for the masses of individuals coming to Canada. So what I'm about to say, it, do not be discouraged uh, if you're not in the criteria or if this doesn't, um, may not apply to you. Uh, but realistically speaking, employers should first and foremost be going to the countries where candidates have the highest uh, skill sets and language really is uh, a thread that, that is, is, is a common theme. Uh, so you need to be looking at countries like the United States, a large pool of individuals. Uh, current Trump immigration policies are such that uh, you'll have a lot of individuals that are very interested in coming to Canada. Uh, secondarily, you've got to look at the United Kingdom. The UK, uh, in, in, in all its uh, largesse, has a big pool of candidates with all of the skill sets uh, large skill sets that Canada will uh, be geared for. So language, if you're working in the U.S., you're a, a, it doesn't mean you're an American. You could be an individual of Indian nationality, uh, Philippine nationality, uh, Chinese nationality. If you're working in the United States, chances are fairly good that you have uh, probably good education uh, if you're a foreigner in the United States, if your nationality is not American and you're in the U.S., chances are very high that you have 
uh, strong English skills. Uh, if you're not dealing with the US, you're dealing with the UK, or you're dealing with France, for obviously uh, French being uh, one of Canada's national uh, languages uh, across the, the board uh, for either Quebec or an employer. So really, those are the countries you should be recruiting in. Uh, so we, we certainly, uh, the other reason why you're looking at those countries is not only to, to retain further on, but it's the processing times. Because although the government is looking to have a 14-day turnaround time, it's unreasonable to expect 14 days turnaround time when you're dealing with some of the visa offices overseas. They have their staffing challenges, they have their seasonal um, priorities, whether it's student, whether it's uh, uh, visit visa. Uh, so you will have fluctuations and priorities at missions abroad. Why focus on countries uh, that you will have difficulty in bringing individuals rapidly to Canada? I have doubts that individuals coming from the very uh, busy missions abroad will be able to quickly transition to Canada. Therefore, uh, focus your efforts on the US, the UK, France, and other countries that have a large pool of individuals with the language skills and other skill sets and as well will allow you to transition to Canada with an electronic travel authorization. You don't need uh, to apply for any other uh, visas except that the working side of things can be issued at the port of entry in Canada. So these are strong advantages uh, starting with recruitment, uh, sorry, retention, then recruitment. Where do you recruit from? And, and that would be the, the ideal strategy. Right. So here at Global Recruiters in Montreal, how do we help our corporate clients? So, you know, it's very interesting because our corporate clients that are coming to us understand the benefits that we bring. Uh, we bring both uh, our in-house Global Recruiters in Montreal, uh, grnmontreal.com, uh, working on some fabulous mandates right now, bringing in IT professionals, working with corporate entities in Canada, we provide one-stop shop service. So we are, we are skilled on the recruitment side, and of course, uh, with more than 75 years of in-house immigration expertise, we're, we're strong on the immigration side of things. So our in-house Global Recruiters of Montreal is the first stage that we uh, involve our corporate clients with. Uh, we go about recruiting. Uh, we obviously have to meet the immigration side of things, so we, we're devising uh, uh, and we're overseeing the advertising strategies. We're using the social media campaigns. Um, we, you know, we coordinate the placement uh, of the ads. We structure the interviews uh, with uh, each of the clients and the corporate hiring managers. We handle some of that ourselves. Uh, and ultimately, we deal with government at all levels. So uh, we are certainly involving our corporate clients first and foremost uh, with the recruitment side at Global Recruiters in Montreal. And uh, secondarily, uh, we uh, go about the immigration side of things, uh, dealing with the uh, labor market impact assessment or if it's going to be the transition plan, the, mo the, the new plans that have to be put into place, uh, we're going to have the skill sets and the knowledge and expertise to put together a plan that we believe would be what government is looking for. Okay. So uh, we cover so recruitment and immigration assistance, and how is the fee structure? So our fees are fixed fees. This is what's really interesting for employers to take note of. Uh, we provide all of our, our services on a fixed fee basis. Now, you'll go about, if you're using a recruiter, very few recruiters work on a fixed fee. They're obviously working on commissions. The commission structure in Canada for recruitment is generally uh, in the 125 to 15% range for mid-level um, individuals, managerial, higher level managerial the, the percentages are, are in the range of 20 and sometimes even 25 percent. Mm -hmm. So what we're providing are fixed fees much less than the percentage commissions of 12.5 or 15 percent. Take a typical 2147. Uh, we have uh, current mandates looking for software engineers. Um, uh, typically, a software engineer can earn ninety to one hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars. The commissions for such a hiring are easily twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Our commissions, no, we we are charging fixed fees. Uh, our structure is in the range 
for recruitment, it's about $7,500. It works out to about $7,500 on the recruitment side um, and the immigration combined. Okay. So in some sense, uh, our, our total fee per body is significantly, and I would even say half, it can be half, uh, but certainly realistically 25%, uh, 35% cheaper than if an individual corporate entity were to uh, hire a recruiter and then deal with an immigration professional uh, to handle their um, uh, hiring challenges. Perfect. So the other, the other thing is the immigration professionals are generally charging hourly rates. We've written about this before. Uh, why would you hire a professional firm that charges by the hour? This is an antiquated um, compensation mechanism. Uh, we've been using fixed fees for our immigration services and our, our recruitment side of things for years. Uh, so an employer is well situated by coming, working with us, uh, and if you're an individual candidate, uh, all of our individual clients, non-corporate, are receiving uh, our, our employment search services. Why don't you explain to them what we do? We provide, well, we'll provide our clients with a database of at least 500 potential hiring employers. We'll provide a Canadian-style resume, a cover letter, as well as other tutorials and other helpful tips on finding a job in Canada. Right. So, I mean, you know, generally speaking, if you're an individual candidate and you're looking from overseas, uh, the global talent stream uh, might be interesting for you uh, because if, if, if you have the right skill sets, uh, we'll be able to certainly match you up with one of our corporate clients. Uh, alternatively, uh, if you're an individual client coming to us, uh, we have excellent employment-based uh, assistance that all of our clients are going to benefit from. Uh, and and the, the aim of the game is to maximize your chances for settling in Canada. And if you're an employer, uh, really uh, what we bring to an employer is knowledge, expertise uh, at very reasonable prices. Uh, and, and I think the prices we're, we're looking at are uh, substantially less than what uh, a typical recruiter would charge. Okay. So just going back to our immigration responsibilities for our corporate clients, what are some, so we prepare the, the labor market benefit plan. What are some other services that we assist them with? Well, we're, we're obviously going to be dealing with government at all levels. Okay. Uh, we're going to be uh, certainly dealing with the contract of employment. Uh, the contract of employment is, is, is fairly important, not only from a labor uh, law point of view, but also uh, it, it certainly has an important consideration uh, when you're bringing in a foreign worker. So from an immigration perspective and from the employment side of things, uh, immigration, uh, re you need to have uh, the employment contract uh, addressing many important issues. Um, and of course, we also, interesting what, I've, what we've noticed is we're, we're in a position to often counsel our corporate clients on the um, policies, the hiring policies that they need to uh, implement, sometimes modify. I mean, obviously they're 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 very well stand they're well stood uh, in in their existing policies. But you know, with the um, mon administrative monetary penalties that uh, have been implemented now, it's about two years back. Uh, the Canadian authorities have. Uh, what I call quality assurance procedures to make sure that foreign workers uh, are being well treated and that the rules are being respected. Uh, there is a process where penalties can be imposed and hearings can be uh, in, uh, scheduled and, and uh, there's a lot of wide-ranging powers that uh, government authorities now have uh, that employers need to be aware of. So when you're going through the hiring process, you need to have all of these considerations uh, well understood up front because it really becomes difficult uh, when you're putting out fires later on. So that's what we bring to an employer overall. Okay. So just to recap, I mean, at immigration.ca and GRN, we provide cost-effective solutions for our clients. Uh, we have experienced recruiters, experienced immigration lawyers. Uh, we have strong relationships with the government, and we basically we want to ensure retention. So we want to assist our corporate clients in retaining their employees. Pretty much, that 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 sums it up. 
Uh, I guess uh, what we're looking for now is the regulations as they hopefully will come out uh, anytime soon. Uh, there's talk that it won't come out before June 12, but uh, certainly uh, stay tuned and we'll certainly uh, be uh, in a position to provide that commentary uh, as soon as it's coming out. Right. So if you are a company and you are interested in hiring some workers, please go to the Contact Us section of our website, immigration.ca. And if you're interested in coming to Canada to live and work, please go to our website and complete our free online evaluation form. And always please like us on Facebook, please follow us on our social media, and we'll keep you up to date with the latest developments in the immigration news. So thank you very much for joining us. I guess that wraps up for today. Uh, thanks for sharing some time with us. We'll uh, share with you when our next live stream will be, probably in two weeks. Stay tuned and have a great day.